Here it is, the tried and true League Start Melee God, Bone Shatter Juggernaut. Every other melee skill in the game was buffed to come up to its level, but Bone Shatter was also buffed and it had a big head start. There are tons of newly buffed melee mechanics like Rage and Impale, and this build is able to take full advantage of those mechanics to remain a very strong melee league starter and maybe still the best strike skill in the game due to trauma. Now, the fact of the matter is that most people don't play melee in Path of Exile, especially at league start. I never league started Bone Shatter either, so this isn't me casting judgment. I think about it, I league start test it, and then I always wind up playing Toxic Rain. Every time. So even though Bone Shatter is old hat for some of the more experienced melee players, for a huge majority of the player base, it is effectively a new skill that they've never used, and it's still really strong. It does a ton of damage, it has a lot of benefits, and it has a lot of built-in clear. Toward the end of the video, I will talk about what you can do to make this work for other strike skills like Double Strike, which may wind up as a better alternative, but anything outside of the classic Bone Shatter Jug is going to be experimental. With all that being said, if you find this video helpful, please like it and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Alright, let's start with something that I've been meaning to talk about for the last several videos and just kind of forgotten to, how to update POB. So what you want to do is you want to go into the bottom left corner here, this options tab, and you want to open that and then click this little checkbox here, opt into weekly beta test builds, save, and then check for an update. And there should be an update. I've had several people say that they had trouble importing pobs that were in uh, video descriptions, which you could find the one for this video in the video description as well. And this is the reason why you're, you're running the outdated version of pob. So get that up to date. All right, now I'm going to kind of talk about some changes that I've made to the build. I have uh, fleshed out the end game of the build quite a bit more. Ultimately, I think in terms of character progression, it's still pretty much the same act one to five. There are a couple of little quality of life changes like, uh, you know, this four point wheel now has a actually much better small node along the side here. So it's a three point wheel. Just lots of little stuff like that where it's a little bit easier to progress through the tree. And, you know, it's mostly going to be the same through acts with a bit more reservation efficiency available now in some spots and also mana costs will be higher, but then there are tools to deal with them. There's Spirit of War to help with mana leech a little earlier on than you can get over here to this little node. And you also can get mana reservation efficiency from a mana mastery a little bit quicker. Maybe the biggest change is that damage output is just going to be much higher. So the Ascendancy order, in my opinion, hasn't really changed. I know that the conservative safe way is to go through Untiring first, and then Undeniable and Unstoppable, and then finish with Unbreakable. You can still do that. Uh, I prefer to start with Undeniable because it is cool, and then take Unstoppable second, but, you know, ultimately it's up to you whether you want to be safe or, or aggressive. I think with damage values going up, I'm probably going to be more aggressive than ever. Maybe it would make more sense to be more safe, but I don't want to do that. So uh, one other thing here is that they they did announce yesterday in the I think it's regularly asked questions. It's not an FAQ. It's like an RAQ, something royally asked questions. Uh, the regret orbs will still be in the game, but we will also be capable of respecking with gold. So I think generally speaking, it's just going to be a lot easier to respec. So if you commit to one and find that you don't need it, you can swap to another. You could potentially even start with unstoppable just to be like as fast as possible. Again, whatever, I think ultimately you're going to get through, you know, the standard for Ascendancy Nodes, Untiring, Unbreakable, Unstoppable, and Undeniable. And this is maybe the biggest issue I have with the state of Bone Shatter Juggernaut is you really do want Untiring because it gives you so much life regen based off of all the self-damage that you do with Trauma. But Endurance Charges are looking really, really nice and being able to take Unflinching and just get like six or so Endurance Charges, six or seven Endurance Charges is really appealing. So that's maybe the one thing that I kind of have like a little bit of uncertainty about with the build. But as it currently stands, just going with kind of the, the, the classic Coke classic of melee builds, this is the setup. Now, Bone Shatter, as I've already mentioned, has a lot of built in clear and Ancestral Cry helps with like bolstering that even further. And because of the cost of uh, reserving a War Cry so that it will automatically cast, you're not having to piano cast it is 15%. We actually get a fair amount of reservation efficiency throughout the tree with Champion of the Cause, the Mana Mastery, and Leader of the Pack that we're able to fit that in while still also fitting in several auras. Now, initially, 
you know, we are not going to be able to fit in flesh and stone. We will need an enlighten to be able to pull that off. But once we have an enlighten, we can use flesh and stone and enlighten in there as well while still automating uh, our war cry. As I said, I have made a basic in-game uh, sort of strength stacker set up here. This was kind of where my uh, ending point was for the build previously. Not a crazy amount of gear, trash gear, trash build. Uh, you know, this would be literally campaign gear, but then also I bought a Sinvictus medal, right? This would be day one stuff for the vast majority of players. So I did expand out to a cluster jewel setup, just very basic cluster jewel setup. Still, again, using just this crappy Sinvictus metal, not an insane amount of damage, going for full impale investment. And I had played around with doing rage investment. I think that as a juggernaut, a uh, regular juggernaut, not a berserker, I don't think that you necessarily get enough value out of going full rage investment. You know, like it's five points to come here and take veterans wrath and the rage mastery. You get six rage from these two bad boys here and seven from the mastery. That's 13% more damage. You know, you go from uh, 130 per, or 30 rage, which would give you 30% more damage up to 43 rage, which would give you 43% more damage. That winds up being right around 10% more damage uh, for five points. That's basically 2% more damage per point. Not actually all that great. So I don't know that Rage is really all that worth investing in other than just getting some generation from Axe Mastery and from Slafter over here, getting yourself about three Rage per hit. That's six Rage per second with 30 being the base cap. You're able to cap Rage in five seconds. That's pretty good. Pretty easy to have that going. And then we can fully commit to investing in Impale, getting as much as, uh, as we can possibly get out of Impale and actually adding a lot of damage through Impale. So this is what it'll look like Kind of day one, day two, three million DPS, I think reasonably attainable with a very crappy axe. And I'm pretty happy with that. You know, it's not insane, but this isn't a Connor build and, and that's fine. This is what I think is realistically achievable for a large number of semi hardcore players in the first couple days of the league. That's the thing about words like hardcore. <laughs> as long as you're not talking about the game mode, it's up to you to define how you feel about it. So then I have kind of uh, this sort of uh, strong man set up here where we're going more into strength stacking. I'm taking some, uh, I'm first of all, I'm taking Iron Will, coming up and taking Iron Will. I've made a little bit more of an investment into strength. I've taken the, uh, the Attribute Mastery and Utmost Might to give a bit more strength. And then I've just kind of compiled a bunch of the standard strength stacking uniques. Astramentus, very basic. I've taken Master of Blades as the anoint on that. That's this note over here. It gives you 30% chance to ignore enemy fizz. And then you get 50% from Bastion Breaker. And then you also get 15% from this note here. 15% chance to ignore. So that's 95% chance to ignore enemy fizz. So not 100%, unfortunately, but, but really close. Uh, it is possible, hypothetically, to get some ignore fizz maybe somewhere else. So that might be able to shore things up. I know you can get it as a glove implicit, but you can also get impale as a glove implicit. And that's kind of where I'm fixing that right now. And then a lot of the rest of this gear is just like strength stacking stuff. The magnate, very cheap standard belt. We've got over 400 strength. So we're, you know, we get a lot of value out of this belt, even though it's relatively common, relatively cheap strength, Ellie res, uh, flask charge generation and a bunch of double and triple damage chance is really good for strength stacking early on. Cyclopean coil can be better long term, especially with good rolls, getting a lot more max life, increased attributes, and then kind of increasing your damage across the board. Definitely makes hitting attribute requirements easier, but the magnate is kind of a good starting point that'll help with your resistances and, uh, you know, just kind of getting you off the ground up and running. All right, now I want to talk about skills a bit more. I have already mentioned that the like kind of notable additions here are uh, Flesh and Stone. Once you're able to get that enlightening and, and be able to afford it, Flesh and Stone is nice because you can stay in Blood Stance, give yourself 20% more damage. Pretty good. Uh, as long as you're hugging enemies, which you are going to be doing. And then if you're feeling like, you know, if you're having issues with tankiness or whatever, you need to you need to turtle up. You can swap into Sand Stance and get that close to 20% damage reduction. As I said, Ancestral Cry and Auto Exertion just kind of come together. The, the thing with Ancestral Cry is like the the aura effect, the max Ellie res, it's okay. Getting three max Ellie res is useful. That would be nice. 
But having to stop and piano that and having to invest into Warcry duration and maybe Warcry buff effect to really maximize that value, I kind of don't think it's worth it. I think you can reserve like 6% of your mana or so and then just have pretty much not all of your melee strikes, but a lot of your melee strikes, uh, you know, basically just have ancestral ancestral call uh, support attached to them without without having to like spend the mana and the socket on a, on a seventh lake somehow. You know, I think that that winds up being a pretty good investment just for like smoothness. It certainly was nice playing with with uh, Ancestral Cry and Call to Arms support while playing around, doing the campaign, doing some like, you know, low mid tier stuff. So I think that having that going forward is going to be good as well. Finally, there are two other skills here. War Banner is not properly supported yet, at least as far as I can tell. The idea here would be just simply that you wear War Banner, you stack up the effect to, to full and then whenever you get to a boss and you have full 50 valor you throw it down and now you do 20 percent more fizz damage and you get 40 percent increased accuracy rating i do have that here in uh the config tab of pob and so if we slap that in uh plus 42 percent increased nope there we go. OK, so as you can see, that's obviously a pretty substantial damage bonus to have that going. Now, you're not going to have permanent uptime on this far from it. But, you know, the ability to plop that down as a very low effort instant cast, uh, I mean, 30 percent more damage bonus pretty much is very, very good. I had thought about working in Berserk as well. Um, you know, the idea, and certainly this is very good for Pob Warrior stuff, right? Like, I want to point this out. It is something you could hypothetically throw in. All that Berserk does is it just chews up your rage and gives you increased rage effect. And, you know, it chews through rage quite a lot faster. So you could, at full rage, you could pop this, and then it would take you, if you didn't generate any more rage at all, it would take you... I guess about six seconds for it to chew through that 30 rage. Now, obviously, if you don't generate any rage, then you're going to start rage decay. So you'd be generating rage throughout the process. You're only generating like with this current state, with not coming up and taking slaughter and with not having other investment into rage generation, just axe mastery. You're only getting two rage per half second, so four per second. So this is only going to last for, I don't know, eight to 10 seconds, roughly. It's not really that great. I guess maybe you could get 10 to 12 seconds of buff uptime on this. So depending on how quickly you're killing an enemy, this is something you could use. I'm going to turn it off, but I think it is something you could definitely slot in and use to just like very quickly blow up enemies. It really depends on how long you're planning to stay in combat with them. Obviously, it's going to be a DPS loss over the course of like a, a World of Warcraft raid boss fight. But if you're doing an eight second fight and you're coming into it with full rage and you can pop berserk and have pretty close to full value the whole way through then this could be good i don't know something to consider but uh, like i said a bit of pop warrior bait i think and speaking of pop warrior bait there's the curse situation so vulnerability is kind of the good generic curse but poacher's mark gives you the ability to generate um frenzy charges on hit as long as you have it qualityed up, which I did when I was looking at this a minute ago. <laughs> so having frenzy charges on hit uh, through through Poacher's Mark is something that can be really good for bossing, being able to consistently maintain frenzy charges even while you're bossing. That's going to be a pretty significant damage increase. Now, obviously, you're going to maintain uh, frenzy charges just normally through mapping by having Blood Rage. Easy peasy, normal stuff. And so you probably just won't even cast curses realistically while level or while doing uh mapping and stuff you know you could get a vulnerability on hit ring that that can work you can just run vulnerability in life tap and use that on like map bosses and stuff but if you're going to do any sort of real proper bossing i think it's better to take poacher's mark for one you get a bit of life and mana sustain that's good fizz dr on the enemy doesn't really stack with the chance to ignore fizz damage reduction so kind of whatever there but getting a bit of added fizz damage to enemies a bit of sustain and then also frenzy charges on hit being able to sustain those frenzy charges is really really valuable you can do mark on hit if you want you can just do a straight life tap posters mark mark on hit set up all the time not run vulnerability if you're a, a big baller you could even potentially uh, spec into Whispers of Doom, get yourself an automatic vulnerability, whether a, a glove corruption or a curse on hit ring, and do both at the same time if you're a, a real big boy. 
kind of up to you, but these are just like some possibilities, some things that I've been thinking about while playing around with this. There's also the possibility that you could try and get some more reservation efficiency elsewhere, maybe through uh, Helm Implicits instead of running uh, Crown of Eyes. Maybe if you're running like a rare Helm with some uh, reservation efficiency uh, Implicit or Essence Modifier, maybe you could try running Herald of Purity as well. I don't think that this winds up being competitive. Like I think that the Crown of Eyes and um, Iron Will feedback loop for a shrink stacker is probably the play, probably the better approach, certainly better for like long term high end damage progression, but it is definitely an option that you could pursue as well. OK, now I want to talk about how to make the build work for other skills. And so I think the first thing, the thing I kind of hinted at right off the bat is I would change the ascendancy around. I would drop untiring for anything other than bone zone where you are slamming yourself a whole bunch and making full use of this. For regular content, I don't really think untiring is all that great. I would go unflinching and I would make a point to like come up here and take stamina, come over here and take vigor. Probably, I, you know, it's a quite a bit more of a reach to come take endurance, but I would at least try to get more endurance charges. In addition, I would probably wind up dropping uh, this this wheel right here, inexorable. The armor bonus is nice, like that's cool, but I would drop this. I would kind of swap some points out, maybe lose some life elsewhere, uh, and take Steadfast. Now you can come down through here and get to, to more max fortification, but I would rather take the fortification duration. This is something I did with the Strength Stacker uh, Juggernaut I played earlier this league, or last league, I should say. Uh, having 80% increased fortification duration just makes it so easy to maintain fortification between stacks in that first couple of seconds of a pull is usually when it's the most dangerous, so having that's really good. And so you get one max fortification here and three here, and then you take the mastery that makes it so all your melee hits have fortify built in, and you have minus three max fortification, so these two kind of cancel each other out, but you still get 21 max fortification, you're going to have that up pretty much all the time, and then you'll get... 2% of life per second from Steadfast, not amazing, but okay. Then what you do is you come to here, you come to your main six link and you drop Fortify and you add in Multi-Strike. And that is pretty much what I would do to make this build function for another skill, for something like Double Strike. Bone Shatter is still looking pretty, pretty good. I hope this helps with your league start. I know Personally, the biggest thing I'm dealing with is figuring out what to play, so adding this into the mix has not helped at all. It only made things worse for me, but hopefully it is helpful for you. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.